Hi guys and welcome to Tech Based. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 update for the May release, which is the build 22631.3958 for version 23H2, of course, or the build code KB5040527. Of course, this is the C release or the optional update for Windows 11, the May release. So some of the new features that we're going to talk about in this video will not be necessarily activated or enabled for all of you. If you want to manually enable them, of course, you can check out some of my previous videos or you can wait on until the next month where Microsoft extends the rollout for the people who didn't receive the new features. So in this video, as always, I'm going to show you what is new. And if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. So as I've said, some of the new features that I'm going to talk about in this video are features that are gradually rolling out. So one of them being the notification for Windows Share in China, which is something new for nearby sharing to work. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth must be on if they're off when you turn on your by sharing, Windows will ask you to allow them to be turned on. Now related to the start menu, Microsoft will allow you to drag and drop pin files to the start really easily. As you can see, apps that are pinned in the pin section of the start menu, and then you can right click on it and then unpin from taskbar if you no longer want it. I think this is a great new feature that will help you use the start menu easier and better. Now one of my favorite new things that Microsoft is introducing with this build for the main release is the new change for the taskbar. So basically whenever you have keyboard focus on the taskbar, and you can do that by pressing Win plus T. You're gonna notice that I have now the keyboard focus on the taskbar. I can have multiple apps open, so I'm just gonna open the File Explorer, I'm gonna go open Notepad, and then I'm also gonna open up Settings. So what you'll notice is that you can press a letter and you will go to the app whose name starts with that letter. This is for the case in which you don't have the taskbar icon set to never combine as I do here. If you have them set to never combine as I do here, you're gonna to have to press the corresponding letter to the title or the name of the window opened in that app. So if I want to jump to settings, of course I can press S, but if I want to jump to the notepad app, I won't be able to press the N key on my keyboard because the notepad app has a title. So I'm just going to have to press Q and it's going to redirect me to that, of course, and then H for the File Explorer homepage. I think that is pretty nice. And this is very, very useful because you can quickly jump around apps that you have opened in your taskbar. Of course, this is very useful for people that use a lot of apps at the same time. Now, let me show you the alternative. I'm going to right click on the taskbar, then go to taskbar settings, then go to taskbar behaviors, and here I'm just gonna select combine taskbar buttons and hide labels to always and now let's open up the settings app again and if I press win plus T on my keyboard I can simply press N for the notepad S for the settings and F for the file explorer so this is a difference whenever you have the icons set like this you can just press the corresponding letter to the app name but when you have the title showing on the taskbar you're gonna have to press the letter corresponding to the title or the name of the window opened in that application also when you press a letter more than once, you will go to the next app whose name starts with that letter. So if I were to open multiple windows of the File Explorer, we're going to be able to see how that works. So I have three windows of the File Explorer opened, I can press Win plus T and then H, 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 and it's going to just jump around the same app that I have opened, but within different windows or different apps that have the same beginning letter. And also by using the home and end buttons on your keyboard and you quickly jump around to the end or the beginning of your taskbar icons. Related to settings, if you go to system and then for developers, this end task option will no longer show a not responding dialog before it stops a task. And of course, if you turn this on, you should be able to end tasks easier by right clicking on an app in the taskbar. There are also quite a few improvements to the file explorer. So one thing that is new, you can now right click on tabs to duplicate them. Of course, we saw this on different builds this week, but I think this is pretty interesting that Microsoft released this as a gradual rollout to the main release as well. Also, a memory leak occurs when you interact with our high folders. This should be fixed. And we have certain fixes related to the file explorer. For example, file explorer stops responding when you browse within it. When you search from home for the first time, you might not get any results. The address bar drop down menu might appear when you do not expect it. When you use the save dialog to save a file to gallery, an error occurs. Because of this update, your file saves to the pictures library instead. The search box does not show the correct folder name when you're in gallery. Blank area shows at the top of the file explorer. The back and forward mouse buttons do not work when you hover over the recommended files section of home. Also images flash when you view them in the gallery. And related to desktop icons, if you have desktop icons on your desktop, of course, spacing between them might become very wide. These are some things that were fixed in this build, so I think that is great. But by far, my favorite feature is the new additions to the taskbar. And of course, we also have the service and stack update, so you can easily and reliably install Microsoft updates by just clicking on check for updates every time you want to do so. So this is the video for today. I hope you liked it. This was the latest update for the main release. I know I was a bit late with this one, but I'm going to try in the next few days 
to get back on the schedule. So if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Emmanuel from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.